I don't know why. Uh-oh, he left. Well. Welcome to the first ever LB2 podcast that's having so many tech technical difficulties. <laughs> and I clicked live, but why I'm does it not look like we're live? Switch to my hotspot. Okay. Does look like we're live now. Okay. Okay. But there's some weird overlay stuff happening. And lots and lots of lag. Let me, because I'm getting, that's the weird thing. Yeah. I'll put, no. It's a microphone. Okay. Oh, I heard something. You heard something? There it is. Hey! There it is. Okay. There we go. Now we're getting. You don't hear me? I can yeah, hear you I guys. Yeah, I hear everyone. I hear everyone. So, you know what I had to do? Mm -hmm. Is I had to specifically set Discord to pick up through my headphones because yes. I was getting the notification sounds, but I wasn't getting any call sounds. So, that's nice. that. <laughs> Zach set it up for me, so I don't I don't know how any of this works. <laughs> yeah, and if you're gonna do um, streaming and stuff with it, you, there's a different setting for that as well. I can hear you both. I cannot see you both, but we can go ahead and. Keep you cannot. Off. I can't. I can see all of us. I can see all, all right. of us. Maybe because I have it popped out. Let me see if I do this. Wait oh, for no! it. Wait for it. Okay, I see Bree. Hi. Hi. I see me. <laughs> do you do see I me? See, do I see a Christian? Do you see me? No? Yes? Nope, I got low Monkey stars. <laughs> Am I there? We're all Christian spots. We're playing musical screens. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Well... Happy July 1st, guys. Yay. Hey. Ha, ha, Happy how... birthday to Liv Tyler. Liv Tyler. I didn't know that one. Today oh, is actually um, Canada Day. Day. Did you know that one? It's that Canada one? Day. It is. It's, it's also, it's a, it's, a, it's a baseball holiday. Today is, is officially known as Bobby Bonilla Day, which because the Mets, pay Bobby Bonilla, who hasn't played for them since 1999, they pay him $1.9 million until 2035. Every July 1st. I want to get paid that. Yep, yep. and the, <laughs> la the last time he played, the last time he played was 1999. Can you imagine? Just, ugh. He's living my dream life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, here, here's, here's your retirement check every year, sir. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I do I have a today, all day, every day. Also, oh, on this day in 1904 was the very first Olympics, and it was held here in the U.S. But you didn't know that. Mm. The first no. modern Olympics. The first ever Olympics. I googled on this day and found a whole bunch of shit, and only wrote down a couple. <laughs> there you go. Oh, there I forgot my notebook downstairs. I'm gonna have my slave bring it upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> and by slave, you mean my note. brother. Yes. Or Poppy. So the loading screen of death over there in the corner, that is Christian, also known as Ambiguous Rupees, on Twitter and Twitch. Oh, you can't see me? I still can't see you. I don't know what's happening. No? Mm-mm. Nope, nope, nope. Mm. It's okay. Why not? Uh, oh, well. Vandals aren't okay. really that important as far as podcast goes. And in the top right hand, right above me right there, this is Bree, my sister-in-law, who will be doing this podcast every Wednesday with me. Yay! 
Yay. Yeah, Eventually. That's exactly how I figured that. Second podcast, I'd be like, oh, she's back. So we've got two streamers <laughs> here and an eventual blo- vlogger. Maybe. That is a very <laughs> strong maybe. Brie also uh, edited my BarkBox unboxing videos for Teddy. The Borker. Heckin' Borker. Yeah. Heckin' Borker. So, how, how's everyone doing with the uh, COVID resurgence? I've been doing exactly the same. I I just got a notification from my work saying that there is a confirmed case at my work for the first time. So that means the I am not going into the office probably until next year at the earliest. Really? Where do you yeah. work? Um, I work for uh, Chevron, their research facility in Richmond. Oh, yeah. wow. And yeah, NorCal. So, so, yeah, and because I'm my job's mostly computer based anyways it's about it's about like 10% lab based so i don't really have to be in the office except for a few tasks and those are being taken care of by one member of our team who goes in regularly um but it's it most likely i'm not going to be going in and the other reason is also because my dad and mom both work in hospitals so that's that's like their borderline frontline exposure even though my dad works in surgery so eh. but you're at more Point of, high risk yeah. than the normal average yeah, American. higher risk yes so but yeah so my life's gonna be the same probably for the rest of the year i am continuing to go into the office despite the fact that we've had three cases on three different floors I just have to wear a mask 24-7 in the office now. It's gotten to the point where without wearing my face mask, I feel like I'm naked. It's so weird that that's become, like, the norm for me. But I also live in Houston, which is the U.S.'s, like, hot spot for cases right now. Yep. But they're yep. not putting us back under lockdown, and uh, as far as I know, they're actually continuing to bring more people into the office where I work. Oh, really? That's mm-hmm. nice. They were setting up another death wow. day, so someone comes in tomorrow. That's Ironically, fun. since we have Friday off, they're only going to be in there for a day, but... I mean, to be fair, though, if everyone just stopped working for, like, a whole year, I I, I don't follow much of anything, like, politics, percentages, anything like that, but I just, I know it wouldn't be good. Bottom line. Yeah, I call and I'll work from home, so I'll still be fine economically, but... There's a lot of people that have lost jobs because of this. And from what I'm seeing, it's not looking like much is going to change until next year at at the earliest. Right. Yep. So that's going to be a lot to go through. I mean, um, I know, I know, I know, I know Eternity knows this, but I I am proposing soon. So that's going to be a... Oh, I hope she's not in chat. No, she's she's driving right now, so okay. it's safe to say this. But, where, yeah. where is this being streamed to? Zach wants to know. Uh, Twitch? Twitch. Twitch. Okay. Why did double confirm? I was looking at other uh, podcast streaming services, and it's just easier for me to do Twitch for now until I get an actual computer set up instead okay. of just off of a laptop. And I'm just sad it shows me as a loading screen of death and not Let my me, actual I'm gonna reload video. it and see if that works this time. Because it reload it I've works for me to get times. free. I'm just clicking could it the reload button. It could be. Maybe it's Night Star's connection. Ah ha I see it. Do you see me now? I do. Hey. There we go. Like you're still in our fox now. Now, now I'm a pretty oh, sexy fox. There she is. There, there we go. Everyone's hey, here. we did Everyone's it. Everyone's here. We made it. <laughs> Solved all of our technical difficulties. For now, yeah. For now, don't jinx it. Don't jinx it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you're not a real streamer unless you have technical problems. That's yep. true. Catchphrase. Belser says hi, Christian. That's, that's why I have that T-shirt. Oh, hi, Belser. <laughs> I wish Actually, I had been a Shimmer fan back when that shirt was out because I can't get it now. Oh, I thought they just released it, re-released it recently. Yeah, I wasn't on it in time. By the time I got the notification, it was sold out again. Yeah, that happens. That happens. This year... See, now I'll be able to see chat in a second. I don't know what I was actually trying to say. There we go. So how's COVID been for you, Bree? 
It's um, well, moving honestly, into a new house and also starting. starting. <laughs> Yeah, it's been difficult. You know, we have 2,000 square feet and nothing to do. No, no, we're just, it's miserable. We're not having the time of our lives at all. It would be nice if we had a pool, but, you know, there's a lot of other people who don't have pools. So we're just stuck with AC. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I get it coffee was great. Oh, how did she, she like the, the bath? bath? She didn't. Um, she warmed up to the water, but I did it by myself, so I had to have her on a dog run. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of treats were involved, but she's soft and clean now after three or four months of not having a bath. So that's nice mm-hmm. for everybody. Mm-hmm. That does sound nice. Poppy is uh, Bree's dog, and she is the most beautiful puppers mm-hmm. ever. Come here. Try to see if I can get her up. <laughs> well, she made herself. <laughs> she's definitely there. Yeah. Is that better, Zach? <laughs> there. Yeah, she doesn't like. She knows she's not supposed to hop up on chairs, so that's a good thing she didn't. Because uh, I've seen this, I'd get in trouble. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's not been too bad. We we do go to Walmart. Um, we, well, we go to the store mm-hmm. occasionally. Um, other than that, I mean, no one's wearing. No one's really. Not many people are wearing masks. Not many people are caring about the social distancing. Um. I'm guilty of that, but um, I still try and keep the six feet, if not more, distancing. And I don't have a mask. I don't particularly want to. I already have shortness of breath. But, I have one um, here, I and I have one like, in my car. Just bam. I'd like to see, um, I'd like to see masks be re- uh, required. Yes, I want them to be a requirement. I saw in- They're required in a lot of places. I know they are here in Houston. That's what I, w- I was reading about that, and I was reading about another county, I think, um, that it's mandatory that you have to wear a mask. And I think that's really cool because with all the spikes and stuff, I think it would help a lot. And especially with me, I mean, I should wear a mask. I don't care about my health, and I need to. Um, <laughs> but if they were required, I, I would not put up a fight. I would wear a mask. Absolutely. Yeah, for, I mean, of course, having two parents working in the medical field actively, I have like three or four masks, you know, like that they just have from work, you know, this extra mask that they take home and stuff. So, you know, having that and the fact that I don't have to go out myself because I'm still living with them right now because all of our move out stuff and all of that got delayed. My my sister's wedding got delayed, which is supposed to be in April, beginning of April. So uh-huh. like, yeah, for for me, like me personally, it, I don't really have to wear a mask that often unless I'm the one going to the store, which is maybe once every two weeks. And that's more because I want to rather than I have to. Right. So there, there's that. I mean, everything else I'm just buying off online and I'm trying not to buy too much, you know, because I'm trying to pay off that ring. So there's that. <laughs> Congrats, so. by the way. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm yeah, so excited really, really, really. for when that happens. <laughs> Yeah, there there will be there will be video. Yeah, I know. I personally, video. I have two masks, mm-hmm. and I didn't pay for either one of them. My co one of my coworkers gave me this one because she's like, "Oh, it's video game theme. That's totally you." And then I got a free one mm-hmm. with uh, Achievement Hunter Pop Socket. I bought. I did buy a mask, but the person um... I bought it from, I have not seen yet. She said next time she sees me, she'll give it to me. But she's one of the, oh, she's a coworker <laughs> of mine that's still working from home, so I haven't seen her yet. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, by the way, are they still giving out the masks with purchases? I don't know. I think they might be. Hmm. I think so. I might buy something small just to get another mask. Yeah, I got like a $3 pop socket or something because my previous one broke. Gotcha. Yeah. I have, a, I, have a, I have a Death Star one right now on my phone. What is this Death be, Star be... I keep hearing about? I can't really see it, though. Yeah. Right. That's a very nice blob. There, <laughs> there. That's like, that's like the best angle. Yeah, you oh, can't really see it because it's also Oh, that's the Star Wars thing you were telling me about yesterday. Yes, that's the thing that Roy's building in Minecraft. Oh, oh. Yeah. terrified to go back into yeah. our Minecraft server. It's gonna be completely this... different. Yeah, I haven't been on in like a week because I've been playing so much Apex and gonna be playing Rocket League today, and then been working on um, 
there's one more achievement left in the new, new Forza update, which is more tedious than actual anything. But because there's like one or two games that I have to like keep at a hundred percent, like like Forza Four and 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 Borderlands Three, which just released this new DLC, which we'll be playing on Friday, and the things like that, you know. So I haven't I haven't had the urge to go back into Minecraft. Even with another update. Even with another update, I mean, we have to go so far in the Nether now because we've explored so much of it already. Oh wow. So- it's going to be a long walk to get to something new because the old stuff won't update to the new stuff. It was just any new stuff you discover essentially updates this is from what I'm reading correctly, but I haven't been in there, so I can't say for sure. That's whack. I, I can't stick to one game, no matter what game I play. If I can mm-hmm. save it and make a new game, I always do. And so we're playing a new game. That's and we, I just found three diamonds to make a diamond pick so we can get obsidian, so we can Never start over. <laughs> Never going back. Yes, I, I I have only died twice in this Minecraft server. And oh, I die all lost. the fucking time. <laughs> lost. Yeah, see, I, I died twice, and I've lost 30 plus levels both times, which is uh, very frustrating. Yeah. Hurts only a little. See, I just yeah, sit to but that's okay. uh, farming on my little boat, made, my little boathouse. Your island. My little island made out of yes. cobblestone. <laughs> Nice. Speaking of games, I finished what? watching a Let's Play of The Last of Us 2 today. Completely? Completely. I watched all of The Last of Us 1 a couple days ago, and yesterday and today I just binge watched Jack Septicai's version, uh, Let's Play of The Last of Us 2. So yes. I, got, I saw the ending oh. like literally three hours ago. So are you going to give us like the full lowdown of the series? Because I've only played halfway through the first one. So what I remember from the first one is just the entirety of this one is basically Joel, who is the main character, is taking Ellie, the other main character, to the Fireflies because she is the only cure right. for this apocalypse happening. She's she's the only one that's been bit that hasn't turned. Correct. She's immune, yes. So... Once he, they finally get to the fireflies and everything, they're like, okay, the only way to get this vaccine is if we kill her. And Joel's not having that, so he kills every, all the fireflies, takes Ellie, and they run. And that's where gotcha. The Last of Us 2 picks up, like, four years after that? Something like that? Mm-hmm. I think five years. Five years? Four or and five is what I heard, yeah. It's somewhere, somewhere around there. So, I watched it all the way through to figure out why everyone was so angry. And unpopular opinion, I don't think it's a bad game and i don't think people should be mad i think what naughty dog could have done to make it a little easier to swallow the story they were trying to tell is if they had you play as abby at the start and then switch to ellie's perspective that way because everyone was already so in love with ellie and joel these are characters they know they're familiar with and to throw in another character after something like that it makes sense to me why everyone was so angry. But if you flipped it and did Abby first, and you got to know Abby and her backstory and understood how she works, I feel like it would have been better received. People also, still would have not been to upset, mention, but they would have Not to understood. mention that this game has had seven years of hype. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was one thing I but did yeah, know. Um, a friend of mine had mentioned that all of the promo trailers and everything for it had Joel in like every single scene, and then you go and play through those scenes in the game, and he's not there. So that I completely understand why people are mad with, and I agree they should be mad at that. But as far as the story goes, it just it, I liked it because I like when there's a happy ending, and they're not afraid to kill off main characters in books and movies and shows and stuff like that. I think it's pretty bold. I. I didn't think about um, the way you explained it, where if they'd played Abby's story first, like it seemed like um, a totally different, well, not a totally different game, but a totally different story that merges in. Cause I really don't like the, well, I really, yeah, I really don't like the way they did it where you continue to play as Ellie and you have the whole Ellie Joel relationship. And then you jump in as Abby and it's like, well, what the hell is this? From, from the, the little I've researched on this and seen a red, like full on like like i guess player reviews of it mm-hmm. um, f- people felt that that Joel's death was 
I guess it didn't it didn't have enough meaning for them. Like it, it wasn't done in a more meaningful way. Mm -hmm. Like it just kind of they weren't expecting it to be so early. After I guess it, and that goes back to the oh we've waited seven years since this game's been announced, and then you kill off the main character of the last game immediately basically, and and it was from from what the the reviews have said or from what people have said who played through it it was kind of a eh, death like it, it, it i guess people wanted the death to be more meaningful there was very little build up to it it was kind of like oh well, you know when we find him this is going to happen and then you know i mean that's really that's that's ah uh, my ideas are jumbled but um <laughs> i had another idea uh, i was going to say something um oh they never tell Joel directly what it is he's done, do they? No. This, it's, we don't see or hear anything. It's just pretty much he gets the crap beat out of him, and then that's just it. There's just nothing to it. He, does, he didn't know who he pissed off, how he pissed them off. He just knows mm -hmm. that this chick is really pissed, and she's looking to, she's looking to mm -hmm. shed some blood. Mm. Belser in chat also points out something that was the only problem I had with his death. Because I also feel like that's another problem that could have been solved if we played as Abby first, because you understand why she doesn't want him to just die, why she wants him to suffer before his death, is because he killed mm -hmm. her father, who she was really close with. And so now, essentially, this father figure for Ellie is being brutally murdered in front of her eyes. So I understand the whole vengeance thing there. But Joel just kind of accepted it at that point. And he... Because that was very uncharacteristic characteristic of him. To not fight, especially when Ellie showed up, he has been known to do whatever it takes to keep her safe. And if he, for him to just right. lie down there and die, not knowing if she, they're going to let her go or kill her too, was very... That was the only problem I had with this. Although, he could have been beat so, so much that he was already branded at that point, so when Ellie showed up, he probably knew it was her, but he probably just his body probably couldn't have responded even if he wanted to, I think. Because, I mean, it made me think of The Walking Dead, if, if any of you have seen The Walking Dead. The season seven um, premiere, the first episode of season seven, um, when they took the characters they did, it was, it was very gruesome. They showed every bit of it, and it was absolutely disgusting. I, you're, it, you're talking about the Negan thing, right? Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah. Have you... Have, have either of you watched The Walking Dead? I've no. only watched through season four, I think, maybe. But I, I have seen, I have been showed that scene. I've have been you... showed like all of that. I have not. I don't like zombies. I have had a burning hate for zombies <laughs> since I was a child. So anything regarding zombies is a no-no for me. But with all this rage about Last of Us, I was like, I have to attempt it. And I, I really she even like story. Minecraft zombies. I don't. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Well, I'll spoil it then, but um, so, because it's it's old news anyway, they're, they've made more sense, but um, so Negan kills um, Abraham and Glenn, and he kills Abraham, I think, to prove a point um, to the group that, you know, you don't, you don't fuck with Negan, you don't, you know, you don't step out of line, you do as I say, or, you're, you know. You're dead. You're dead. You're cut off, literally. Um, and so he kills two members. He kills one for a message. Well, he kills them both for a message, but two different messages. The second one, Glenn, he kills for just about no reason. So the members are defending. Um, they're trying to defend themselves, and they're trying to be like, yo, you know, why'd you kill Abraham? Like, that was so unnecessary. And then because more people are stepping out of line and talking back, fighting back, um, he goes out and just smashes Glenn's face in very brutally and it it's just i'm so against negan i absolutely abhor his character and it, it made me think uh when i looked at abby i thought of negan and i was like i was like i really don't like this character so the whole time i was like i don't feel for her, her she lost her dad sure joel lost his daughter so i felt that joel's death was very unnecessary at least the the way it was the timing everything if it was drug out a little more then I can accept it. But I figured he was going to die anyway. It, it, the point was that there was no buildup, essentially, right? Like that, Right. That, that's what I hear. 
Yep. Again, I think that's another problem that would have been fixed if, like, we played as Abby first and foremost. And even if maybe we just played the entire game as Abby up until she killed Joel, and maybe a third game was Ellie's revenge. Because that the would game, have been nice. I feel like there was a point in the, at least watching the playthrough, and I know there was a lot of editing stuff, like, but there was a point where we, they were playing as Abby, and I was just like, what is the point? You're just going back and forth. It's just dragging out. We need to co hurry this along. Because I am getting annoyed playing as this woman. Mm-hmm. One thing, um, kind of a side note, but it's also uh, relevant, is the Seraphites. They come in and then they just go. There's no, ex they're, like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if um, Jack got any text to read further into, like, the religion or the cultism, like, everything that was, um, that they were about. It was just, they're called scars. They have scars on their face. When they, you know, when they kill, they hang them and toss their guts. And I just, I was, I was really confused. And I felt like that was really either unnecessary or they should have just threw in way more and made it more about that. But yeah, I felt, that yeah. came out of nowhere. There was no reference to them in the first one. And then there was the rattlers. Is that what they're called in Santa Barbara? Just them out of the too, blue. Yeah. No explanation. We just do one quick thing here and then we're done with them. And I was just yep. like, oh, what? You just introduced this whole new option of, like, a plot line, and we're moving on already? Yeah, two of them. I mean, they, they spent more time with the Seraphites, but, I mean, like, they, they might as well have just been the same enemy the whole time, I think. I mean, that wouldn't have made for as interesting a game, but... Yeah, I mean, like, I think it's okay to introduce new enemies if... If you just, I guess, explain about them more, give give a little more, you know, reason to why they're scary, except for that, you know, oh, kill people bad, you know, or mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, it kind of, I, I think a lot of the 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 issues that people have with this game, I'm, I, I really want to start calling it the Borderlands syndrome now because, it's, <laughs> it, but, you know, it, it took forever for Borderlands Three to come out. It came out. We were you know, so, me and, and Christian, what we played it the day of release, we were downloading it at midnight. <laughs> yeah, we and Christian and, and, were all over know, that. <laughs> you know, halfway through the game, you know, uh, they they take a character away and give you a character that nobody that no likes. one cares about. Aww. No one likes, no one cares about, and no one wants to be around. No one wants them to be in anything just because it just, it's... They could have just done better with a little bit of character writing or, you know, show us a little bit more here and there or something like that. Yeah, and just, I had no forewarning because I think I was a couple days ahead of you on my playthrough. And so when it happened, more, I was so pissed. Yeah. I didn't touch it for over a week. And then all of a sudden Christian got there and he had a little bit of forewarning because I was like, Christian, I can't play this game anymore. I'm I'm done with Borderlands, the entire franchise. I'm done. <laughs> and then he got to that point and I'm like. At that time, I was over it, but I, I was able to feel with it because I was so upset that they took away this beloved character when there was other ample characters they should have taken away instead. Mm. Or, or they could have. It just... It, 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 it's not that the, the death of that character felt anticlimactic. It's just that they... It's more that they took away something that was good and didn't replace it with something of equal value. They took away something because they wanted to. And they didn't give us enough time with that character anyways. But a lot of that, I think, is part of the reasoning behind, you know, there was such a big gap between the games. There was a lot of hype leading up to this. And everyone was so excited. And that being said, Borderlands 3 is really fun to play. But the story is just so lacking in it compared to 2. It's yeah. unsatisfying. I mean, and their DLC so far, I have really enjoyed the DLCs way more than I've enjoyed the game itself. Like, the one with Gage, I literally cried during that DLC. I got so emotional and invested in the story they were telling in that DLC. And then they took away Death Trap for a split second, and I, I cried, and I raged on stream. <laughs> and then they brought him back, and I was like, okay, if this was another situation like the first one, I would have had to... I would have literally been done with Borderlands, as much as Borderlands 2 is still my all favorite game. Stop. Stop. Grumble. <laughs> oh, Poppy wants yeah. mom's attention. So, yeah. so I think if they had just 
played if you just played as Abby the entire game from uh and had the game like halfway through been her killing Joel that would have been mm. a lot better than him dying right away especially when all their advertising for the game showed Joel in many of the scenes where he wasn't actually in that's just false advertising at yeah, that point it's, it's 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 kind of you know how they like like with Marvel they the like hide stuff when they show trailers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like when Infin Infinity War was coming out, uh, they removed all the the stones from Thanos's glove when 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 he's fighting with uh, Captain America. You know they they just they they made it so that you don't know that he has all the stones in that moment and things like that. You know, but just to completely replace a character or just doing like that, I mean, I I, I feel like some of those. Some of those fans of that game were, I guess, kind of robbed in that way. See, I also think because of the way the trailers all went, I think what had happened was they had made the whole game and had didn't have Joel dying until the very end. Mm -hmm. But I think somewhere between the make of the trailers and the game release, they decided to kill him earlier. I think he was originally in those scenes, but something happened and then they took him out Which of all those scenes and they didn't update the trailer. Of how it's yeah, it's like it's like you said. At least if they'd have if they'd have killed him maybe halfway through, I think fans wouldn't have been upset. They would have had a little more time to. They they probably would have sensed it coming. Yeah, exactly. there's more foreshadowing. Like, that, yeah, a little more satisfying of an ending. Like, well, we had a little more time with him rather than just like, hey, here's a second game with Joel and Ellie. Oh, just kidding. It's all about Ellie and Ellie. Yeah. Like, no one knows about until. Yeah. Ah. I just, I'm very salty about Abby. I will say, I, I didn't maybe because I watched mo half of The Last of Us 2 and then went back and watched The Last of Us 1, I wasn't mm -hmm. as attached to the characters. I didn't really care when Joel died. I know a lot of people did. But I'm also kind of like, there's two story sides to every story. So I was willing to hear out Abby's story before I raged over the death of Joel. Which a lot of people in general don't have the patience for that so their automatic response is to rage and not even give her a chance which is why you see all those people that beat the game and immediately take the disc out and break it in half mm -hmm. which is that, that's, that's kind of how i felt about uh borderlands 3 with the eva is it eva or ava ava yeah it's just like i was like okay like i'll give you a chance to change but then and she, she never didn't does. change, and in fact, I think she got double downed on yeah. her. Yeah, exactly. And, and that was like, okay, I was like, like I'll see if you change by the end of the game. But she really didn't. In fact, you got even worse. So to take away this character and give us that one, ugh. I will say though, it's... at least with the Borderlands game, there was a lot of foreshadowing. Like the moment you met Ava, you knew Maya was going to be the one to go. As part breaking See, that's as it the was. thing. There was the foreshadowing, but could it, could it have been at the end, right? Or at least introduce her as a. We they, literally they, had see, her the for thing, a the problem, planet. Yeah, they they introduce her like halfway through the game, and they they kill her off at three fourths of the game. If that, I and think that's just it, it. wasn't enough time. Not even three. We only fourths. got like, to interact with her for an hour worth of gameplay. Not yeah, side like the second stuff, the. the but... Maybe the, the, the second third, like when the second third or the, the, the last, the final third started and then she gets killed off and you're just like, well, OK, I barely got any time with her. And it was like the one character I was lo most looking forward to, or at least for like Eternity and I like that's our favorite character. Except for Jack, but we ignore that. Yeah, Maya, Maya's third on my list. Um, Jack Gage Maya. <laughs> but yeah. E, what did you think about the um, pacing? Of both the stories and just the overall game. Um, I feel like Ellie's pacing was really well done. I think that it had the perfect amount of time, space, relax. I feel like Abby's, um, the first time you play as her, between, um, what is it? I felt like her pacing before they got to that bridge where she fell was very, very slow and it could have been faster. I just felt like that part was dragging mm -hmm. out, and that's when I like wanted to fast forward through it. And I'm like, this is boring. I need something entertaining. What is happening? And I don't like the zombies. The little zombie fights and the the whatever they're called, the big guys. It didn't phase me at all. So I wasn't entertained with that. Shamblers. 
the, but I was mainly watching uh, it for the story purposes, and story wise, it just mm-hmm. it dragged on at that section. But after that, I felt like the pacing was really well. I my brain just some blank piece of paper now. Um, I thought Ably Story was very very slow. I feel like we could have sped that up a little bit. Um, what um what about the overall pacing? Like, what did you think about like the Nope, that's not the end yet. Oh, nope, that's not the end yet. Oh, wait, yeah. this might be the end. That was, uh, it was kind of annoying. I was glad to have ended with um, Ellie, Dina, and JJ. And that if that had been the ending scene, I would have been fine there. It would have been a little ambiguous to what happened to Lev and Abby, but I was okay with that. <laughs> and hey, then... hey. There it is. <laughs> plug, shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the way it actually ended... I was getting really frustrated with it. I was kind of... I was going to be furious if they killed Abby after all that at the end. Because I felt like the whole message of this was how far will you go for revenge? And will it change you as a person? I felt like Ellie's revenge was changing her as a person. And the game couldn't end until she realized that. So if she killed Abby, I felt like she would have gone too far. She could have never got back to the person she was. But the fact mm-hmm. that she didn't and she let them go, I felt like that was the perfect ending. I feel like um, I feel like she should have realized that when she was torturing Nora, I think that's what her name was, Nora, the medic for the wolves. Um, she felt so disgusted and uncomfortable with herself after that. I really, I really wish she would have realized sooner that like she's like you know what maybe this isn't the way maybe i should just let her go instead of just doing a whole wild goose hunt all just to beat the crap out of her and then lose a couple fingers and be like you know what i'm satisfied i'm cool i'm straight my life is totally good i will say i really liked the scene with nora just because she was like why aren't you sick what you're breathing in the spores and and I Ellie's like, like you could die slow or you could die fast. It's up to you. I really liked that scene, but I'm very sadistic at heart, so I really like that scene in particular. But you don't like zombies. That's fair. I don't like biscuits. The pop when you open the can scares the fuck out of me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Comparable, really. <laughs> um, I do like the I do like the zombies. I liked the big the big one at like what what was it ground ground zero? Is that what they called the hospital? Yes. I believe so. I really like that. It was very... I, I don't like macabre. I don't like gore. I don't like anything that's gruesome or nasty or even bloody for the most part. But I really liked it. It was so gross and intriguing. See, that's so, yeah. a so, weird thing for me because, like, I don't like... Like, if I was bleeding right now, I'd, I'd be able to get all nauseous. But, like, Border, uh, Gears of Fight, Gears of War is one of my favorite franchises ever. And there's a lot of blood and gore in that game. When I played the fourth one, oh, I blah, blah, blah. all that mucusy, membraney looking stuff. I I played the third one, and I was like, I, when I, I was way younger, I was like twelve, thirteen when I played the third one. I was like, yeah, this is cool, blood and gore. And then I uh, played the fourth one, and I was like, you know, I'm not feeling it. I had to look away for certain things. I'm I'm like, out. Checking out, checking yeah. out. I left the chat. <laughs> mm-mm, mm-mm. Yeah, no, it's um. Like for for me, I guess with oh, there's one question I want to ask before I go off on that tangent. Um, th- so they they go to Ground Zero in the game, but do they ever like I guess do they ever look into like finding what the source was or like how it got Location out? Zero? Yeah, I they I don't think they did. Okay, they, they, they were, were more to... about isolating and trying to find a cure. One thing I really, really don't like about the story, or like the way they the, they made the story, is they had all these notes scattered everywhere. They had pictures, they had notes, they had Very full-on like miss. sheets and stuff. They had so much story for some unnecessary spaces for material. So like, oh, here's this whole story leading to a what is it safe full of like you know, a couple shells of ammo, this and that, the other thing. But there's no story to the Seraphites, and there's too much story to Abby, and then there's no story to Ground Zero, Patient Zero, how this all really began. It's just, hey, here's a monster at where the source could have been. Right. And it's then- it's it's almost like if they should have elongated those segments and made them DLC, and then 
like added other parts to the game to make it more cohesive. Well, they, they might, because like they, the first one had it, that DLC. It mm-hmm. was the past, but they could still potentially do that. But also, I feel I like know, it was kind of like in bad taste. Like, I know the game was scheduled for release before all COVID happened, but I feel like because it's going on... It makes it worse. Right now, <laughs> it, people have a little bit of a sour taste in their mouth while they're playing this game that they thought they were going to enjoy so much. Right. Not only that, though, it's just all the losing your character, the timing, mm-hmm. so much gore. There was mm-hmm. so much gore. The They were... I, I think... They were a little too graphic with some of the scenes. I, I had to look away for a lot of things. Yeah, they said some screen, some scenes that were described as tasteful. Oh, that's that's a whole other topic. But, but, <laughs> but before I get into that, back to the like finding out the like source thing. The reason why I bring that up is because I feel like a lot of like okay, virus or like zombie things don't necessarily go there or try to find the source they're trying to find a cure obviously mm-hmm. they don't find like okay where did this happen where where can we pinpoint this to and that's one thing i like about um it's it's not exactly zombie but it's it's kind of close in um the expanse have any of you guys either watched or read the expanse mm-hmm. I have not. okay it's, it's a it's a sci-fi series um it's it's actually on amazon right now there's four seasons on amazon but anyways it, it's also a book series but one of the things is there's this like I don't even call it a virus. It's basically like this alien existence, this amalgamation of whatever. And it started taking people and like, you know, getting gaining control of them essentially and turning them to these like superhumans mm-hmm. and all this kind of stuff. But like one of the storylines running through the show is this detective essentially trying to find this source. Like what where what caused this? And that's like part of the mystery of the whole the whole series um and you know they once they find one thing it's like oh then it's not as simple and then oh well at least to this bigger thing and then at least to another bigger thing and then these people are involved and all that kind of stuff and i i think that's one thing that i think can make like a, a i guess a proper zombie more proper zombie story a little more interesting or something closer to a zombie story mm-hmm. you know where there's like let's have an adventure instead of you know trying to survive yes we are surviving but we're also going to try to find the source we're going to try to like you know essentially kill it at the source something like that i think world war z did that i think in the books Mm -hmm. um they had a whole bunch of different um they had a whole bunch of different stories from different people um, all around the globe uh, at different times. Um, and I think one or two of the many stories um, talked about possible patient zero, the possible source of where this came from and where it all um, began. And mm-hmm. I think if they, took, if they took that and they mixed it with almost any other zombie or infected or, or undead idea, I think that would be really cool. Yeah, um, exactly. Exactly. With with all the different stories and stuff, because it's always one. It's always usually one story. That's just my opinion. I would like multiple different stories, not the way Naughty Dog did it, where it's you know a whole bunch of one character, then you toss in another one, and then it's, it's really weird ambrosia salad that's not made properly. I think right. It's it's the oh, last ship. I think that's a Hulu show. I vaguely remember watching it. I think in that one too, they did go find the source. Oh, okay. It's been a very long time since I watched But um, I was also watching mm-hmm. Game Theory the other day uh, for The Last mm-hmm. of Us, where they point made a very good point that if it's something in the brain, and I think it's cordyceps is what co- mm-hmm. initially caused this, um, yeah. they wouldn't, if they killed Ellie, that would get rid of the vaccine. They would need her alive in order to make this vaccine. Because of the way oh. science, scientific mumbo jumbo, I don't understand. But they it's, explained it, it's, it very it's, well. It's the antibodies. It's it, it's it's it, if they're immune to the the virus, they need to figure out what the antibodies are essentially, and figure out how to clone that so they can give it to people in a in a vaccine. Mm-hmm. Which is why they would need them alive so that they could keep producing these antibodies so they could do research on the antibodies. Which is yeah, the whole thing about that that was one thing. It's like, well, yeah, I didn't get to the end of the game, but like I, I kinda know the end to the first one. It's like, well, why why on earth would they want to kill their only source of, you know, immune blood? You know? Mm-hmm. I didn't think about that. 
you know, why, why would you, this is the, like, if anything, you know, just keep taking her blood and stuff and then run whatever tests you can on it or whatever. And but, then maybe take some tissue, but not all of it. Because if you metal right, too much, yeah. it would absolutely kill your source. But you can take samples and stuff. And yeah, I, you just do small biopsies. Yeah, she could go brain. Well, yeah, she could go brain dead and be a vegetable and still live. Which I, I mean, if you're looking for a cure for humanity, then I, I guess I could. That would be justifiable. <laughs> you can't I'm run sure. anywhere if you're a vegetable. Right, and Zach, I asked Zach. I was like, "What would you do? Would you?" And he's like. You know, honestly, no. I would, you know, rather take the cure over saving a child who... Right. If, if that was the choice and there wasn't the obvious third choice, is like, let's keep her alive and find the vaccine. Oh, yeah. I've always told Doc if I'm ever in that position, because I think he's my um, emergency contact. Like, if I'm ever in that position, just pull that damn plug. I don't, mm -hmm. don't want to live. I don't want to be in pain. I also don't want the medical expenses. Absolutely right. not. <laughs> not to mention, someone else could be, you know, uh, under under medical care in your spot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I know exactly. I'm personally uh, a donor, so like, if something happens to me, my organs will go to people that need them. So I'd much rather it go to someone that needs them than me sit here and suffer and waste away not using them, taking advantage mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. That that's that's the one thing like I think my uh, or Paulina, my girlfriend, and I agree on the most is like if if we get like cancer or something, we don't even want to go through chemotherapy or anything like that. It's just like you know what, I know I know they can cure it and all that, but it's like at that point, it's like I'm just gonna go live the rest of my life and then you know don't even bother with too much of a funeral, burn me up and throw me in the ocean, and be done with me. Well, and for some I feel like uh, people, just in and I, yeah. if I. If I ever had cancer, oof, I, I wouldn't do chemo or anything. I would just. I, I don't want that miserable quality of life. Right, live every day like it's your last. That's what everyone says from like the moment you can understand speech and the right. moment you can actually think and understand things cognitively. So I feel like, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, if I had cancer, I, I mean, I, I want to donate my organs anyway. But yeah, mm -hmm. donate more organs. I, if I live for another week, month, maybe a year, cool. Use yeah, all of them. For different mm -hmm. people, chemo work. Um, I won't go into detail about it in honor of my grandmother. Um, but she had one chemo session, and after going, mm -hmm. she decided not to go again. And we saw firsthand, like it completely changed the way she functioned. So yep. we didn't understand what she was saying half the time, and we watched her slowly deteriorate just from one chemo session. <laughs> And, like, the My... cancer she had when she was diagnosed, she was di diagnosed on March 7th. I remember this because it was the day I got my learner's permit to start driving. Oh. She passed away exactly one month later after been tell being told that she had six to nine months left. Yep. I mean, so yeah. That... Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was, I was just going to... Well, it, it's, it wasn't... I've lost a lot of my family members to cancer. Um, but but my grandmother, who did not have cancer, but she did have uh, cerebral palsy, severe cerebral palsy, where she couldn't do anything for herself. She couldn't eat um, from like I think in the early seventies. I think wow. when she made it. We took care of her for about five years, you know. And you know, we of course we had a caretaker for when we weren't there and stuff, and just a general caretaker because you know both my parents were were working long hours at the time. Um, but you know, for about 60, 60% 60 of the time, it was my mom and I taking care of her, you know, and my dad, you know, everything from giving her a shower to walking her to the bathroom to, you know, making sure the the feeding tubes hooked up and cleaned and all that and everything associated with that, you know, and, and it, it's, I, I wouldn't want anyone to do that for me. Like, I, I don't know as bad as that sounds, but I wouldn't want I wouldn't want to essentially burden other people like that, even though they might want to do it for me. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to do that to the people around me. It's just, just you know, let me go essentially. You know, it's like with I my mom. End of life care. Um, I don't know yeah. if my mom's ever told you this, Brie, but like with my mom, she's always told us if she ever gets dementia or any memory altering disease, she doesn't want us to come visit her and tell her who we are every time she 
her biggest fear in life is that she's going to forget us. We're going to come see her wherever she is with this disease. She's not going to recognize us and be like, oh, we're your kids. She says that she already feels bad in case that would to, were to happen. So she would rather us pretend mm. to be someone working there or someone new and just introduce ourselves every single time and pretend like we don't actually know her. Mm. Yeah. Working with end of life was really hard because I worked with people who had dementia, Alzheimer's, you know, a combination of both. And my great grandmother may or may not um, have dementia now, so that's also cool. So I think I, did, I think Paulina's grandmother is developing a little bit. I would not want to live like that. I I wouldn't want end of life care. I would just kind of want to live at home comfortably or as comfortably as I can. And if I pass peacefully, I pass peacefully. If I pass having a fit and maybe a stroke or however I go, I want to go out at home, comfortable with, you know, my family. Even if they're upset, it would, it would just be more heartbreak to drag my life out and make myself more miserable and to pretend that everything is okay. Right. See, I've witnessed two deaths in my life. Both of them were very, very slow. One of them we actually worked on, and the other just, we were all sitting around and she passed. And after witnessing that stuff, and even before then, I kind of knew. I've always said, I want to go fast. I don't care how you do it. Just kill me fast. I don't want to suffer. I don't want to feel pain. Just shoot me. Do something. Kill me so I don't have to experience that. I don't even want morphine. I had morphine when I was in the hospital, and it went from one side to the other, and it burned. I don't even want morphine. Just, mm -mm. no man's no allergic? Nothing. You could be allergic. I don't know. I don't. You might, you might, that might be allergic reaction. Yeah, that sounds like Maybe. allergic reaction. Partially. Yeah. That's what, that's what my mom said. Yeah. They, um. But they also had. The, yeah, they had it all the way into my heart. Was, yeah. Was, I did not like that. <laughs> Whoosh. <laughs> See, see, I, I've had quite the opposite experience because I, I am allergic to no meds. I just have like my allergies are like hay fever and like cat dandruff, stuff like that. Me too. Yeah. So <laughs> I had to get surgery once. Ooh. Um oh, and, I think I know what surgery we're talking about here. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about that surgery. Now um, and and uh, I'll just say this way, it was it was groin surgery. That's as far as I'll go. Fair um, enough. Yeah. And man, they put me on something before before the anesthetic, like just to ease the pain before they actually took me into the the, the room. But when I was out of the hospital, and the, this is this is actually the second time I've been on that drug, is, is Norco, which is a step up from Vicodin. I was on that and Tylenol 500. I'm familiar with that one. Yes, <laughs> you I was. I I had to take those for like two weeks before, like I was not feeling general pain from mm -hmm. just laying down and of course i had to like lay down for like a week after you know just in bed and that is the most frustrating thing ever right not being able to do anything yourself no, and, and, and 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 because of the drugs like you couldn't even watch tv you can't do anything you're just sitting there and it's like everything's you're just dull. <laughs> everything's just everything's just dull like like it, when when like drug addicts and stuff talk about faded or when you hear faded like in a song like like that's faded, that is absolutely faded. It's crazy. I went under ketamine for when they uh, when they put the um, IV in my neck to do uh, uh -huh. whatever, whatever they did. I was there. I I was tilted to the side for an hour and a half. It took them that long to start and finish. And I was looking into the corner of the sheets in the ICU, and halfway through. <laughs> It, it was a long tunnel, and at the end, I saw silhouettes for no reason. It just was like I was out of my mind, and I heard I heard stuff, but it was just gibberish, like simlish or something. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ah, wow, this is a long hallway. And then I woke up, and I had no idea where I was going. I I thought I was just at the end of the hallway, and I thought I was still asleep. And I went to go speak. It was not English. It's like you numbed mm -hmm. my whole mouth, and I was like trying to. <laughs> Try to speak French or something, and it was just, I don't like that feeling. I would never uh, want to do drugs ever. I, I still think anesthetic is just the trippiest thing. Like, like, because I've had to get surgery twice. So, once for that, and then one for just getting my wisdom teeth removed. And uh, just like, it, it's just, it still freaks me out because it's just like, all that time, it's, it's gone. 
you didn't it didn't happen you don't know what happened it's gone nothing yeah. happened it's, it's oh, just i love watching those videos of people on. high on the anesthetic when they get their wisdom teeth pulled They're that's gonna hilarious. be me that's i've never me but it, in my life had a surgery so, so i can't though. release any of that but like those videos like how much would it take to get me like that without having to have surgery what would i have to do <laughs> How much alcohol do I need to intake so that I can alcohol. see what crazy stuff comes out of my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's just like, like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's almost scary, but you don't, you, it's not like sleep where you understand the passage of time when you're sleeping. It's just, you're out, and then you come back. Yep, there's no, it's just, it's... Yeah, and it, it was especially with the, the the proper surgery, not the wisdom teeth surgery. It it was re like I guess coming back to all of my senses at one time was honestly a little overwhelming. It 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 took a lot to like come back. It's like okay, what happened? I you know I it's like what can I feel? What can I touch? What can I smell? Can I move? Yeah, it was like when I got my wisdom teeth I took it taken out. It was more of just like I just kept fading in and out. Like they gave me so much. Like I, I would I woke up, it was like they put me in a wheelchair, right? And then my mom got me to the car. I was I was already out again. I remember getting in the car and then I was out again. And then halfway home I woke up again and then fell back asleep. And then suddenly I was on the couch. And that's that's what I remember. That is a wild ride. It was, oh, it was, it was crazy. But yeah, just the the waking up in the hospital room and just feeling like, okay, are all my senses back? Like, who's here? Can I hear? Can I see? You know, what's going on? Does it smell like? Does it smell like a hospital? You know, stuff like that. Not to mention um, the warnings they give you when they're like, okay, so with anesthetics, you know, this that and the other thing. There's there's always dangers and precautions we have to take because some people will go under anesthetics they'll go under for surgery and they won't wake up and they could be like our age they could be kids mm -hmm. they could be you know middle-aged adults and i think about that all the time i'm like wow what if i went under for that simple little surgery to put a you know an iv in my neck and i did not wake up like right. i was asleep for years months forever that's wild it's, it's super crazy oh also the one thing that sucks about like like a full-on surgery Mm -hmm. cuz they put that put the tube down your throat, right? You don't feel that happening. That happens when you're already asleep. Oh but, my god. But because <laughs> but because w they never. But oh my gosh, like you have never had a sore throat until you've had that sore throat. Cuz that is th this the craziest it's one of the worst feelings. I would not wish that upon my enemy feelings. Like it's just oh, it's just so it's just so raw and and you just like just uh, my mom's had her stomach pumped, I think, once, maybe twice in her life. And, and she she's um she was a medical student for a time. She's back working, um, doing like bed sheets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but she every every day she sees people with like tubes and like going undergoing surgery, and she's like, Man, I do not miss getting my stomach pumped. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, what? She's like, because they force a tube down your throat. Mm -hmm. And then you know you gotta like get all that out, so like it's like it's forced, and then you get the tube pulled out without really any like. Okay, here we go. It's just kind of like oh, that's yeah. mm -hmm. you're like. Speaking of medical nothing. problems, Christian, what happened to your finger? Well, oh, that's uh, speaking of medical stuff. This is just <laughs> an ongoing thing. So like, I want to say in like December, my my pinky finger started uh, like blistering, and then like it would crack and peel. So basically, like, the skin's been coming off and remaking itself, but just on my pinky over and over again. So what I ha I went to the doctor, uh, I want to say, like, at the beginning of coronavirus, and what they told me to do was the, the skin needs to be repaired, so cover it in Vaseline regularly for about two, three weeks now, and it's it's getting better, but I'm... I want to see if it like fully heal later. Mm. So for now I have it wrapped up and I have this is my Christian, new role. And I have Christian a couple is part other snake roles. confirmed. Over there. Yes, part snake. <laughs> Skin just keeps messing up. What but is I, it? Uh, they speak parcel tongue? Yeah, parcel tongue. Hey, nice. It's my girl. <laughs> Speaking of Speaking of which, Harry I'm playing Potter. through Lego Harry. We talk about this off and on all the time. 
but I, my favorite one I've ever got the chance to try was um, the Pirates of the Caribbean one. Because yes. that's my favorite movie series. I 100%ed that one. My mom is 100% the biggest of that one because Lego game fan. They, 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 did, they did the stupid thing, which is the thing to make you, hey, play the game, is that they gave, give you a 12-point achievement for like completing the first level or whatever. Mm-hmm. And to get that back to like a like a five or a zero number, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Is you have to collect an exorbitant amount of studs in the game. So you basically have to beat the game. Them and I was like, well, magnets, though. that's where it's at. If, if I'm yeah, if I'm gonna do this, then I might as well just play through the whole game. Also, that game is terrible to play co-op because of how it splits the screen. All it's, Lego games are absolute, have been real. Isn't it like isn't it like when you're in the same zone, like when you're in a very close vicinity, you're on the same screen, and then once you get a distance apart, it splits. It splits, but it's but the, the splits screen in a starts very to move way. too, and a lot yeah. of them. Yeah, it's like, but like depending, depending on how on where far you, you are, go like, it'll away. Start to, like, rotate. Yeah, yeah, it What's... starts. It starts at like a diagonal. It, it, it slowly straightens out and goes mm-hmm. the other way. Oh, mm-hmm. it's so weird. That sounds weird. I mean, I kind of remember it, but I it's been years. It's been like, what am I, 20 now? Uh, eight years since I've played a Lego game. I've never played a Lego game by myself. Anytime a Lego game was inserted in there, my mom's like, where's the other controller? We're doing this. I remember seeing <laughs> at our old like computer that had the big old, the monitor had the big old butt on it, sitting in front of there in our, our den in our house, shouting to my mom in the living room, cheat codes for the Star Wars Lego game so she could get the stud finder <laughs> and the magnet and the That's bonus the thing, locators. Though, like, like in the Star Wars one. In the Star Wars one, it doesn't split your screen. It just it just like expands essentially. Mm-hmm. And if That's someone gets weird. if someone gets sucked into another area, then you both go, you know, obviously. But like it's just like the, the screen keeps expanding and it's just so you can see both people. Or eventually I think it does cut, but it doesn't like it doesn't cut like the Pirates one where it's like all like this. It just like puts the screen and it's like, okay, they're playing their own game essentially and you're playing your own game. Like like a, like a Rocket League split, split screen, if you will, or Borderlands. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I really don't know. Ooh, interessante. Speaking of yeah, Harry but they, Potter. Spe- yeah, Harry Potter, they, they have the Lego, they have a remastered edition on um, Xbox One or like the newer generation mm-hmm. that includes both games. For forty bucks, but if you don't care about the achievements, I think it was on sale on Switch for like twenty bucks. Oh, but yeah, that's that. Just the random knowledge. The more you know. So when I was in my teenage years, I was the biggest Harry Potter fan. I got to the point where my family didn't know what to get me unless they were getting me Harry Potter merch. <laughs> Recently, I've seen some posts. A lot of people are renouncing their Harry Potter fandom because of what's going on with J.K. Rowling lately. Mm-hmm. I read into that, and what I think, if that's where you're going to ask, is um, I'm, I'm pretty mixed. I'm not at all, I don't think, any transphobic or um, against all these genders and stuff, but I think that um, she is a bit, she's an older woman, not old and like decrepit and all that, but she's an older woman, and I think she's that, not quite a boomer. She's not a boomer, <laughs> but she's not like she's not on our level. Yes. Um, I will say though, older um, older people are from a bit of a different time, and um, I think that the way she feels is I can't think of the words, but um, I she understand didn't... why she feels the way she does. My grandfather, he's mid to late 60s and he is kind of on her level as well a little more aggressive about it but um i understand where she's saying you can't teach a new dog our old dog new tricks right and so i i read quite a bit about um her her experiences what she has to say what she thinks and a little bit of it confuses me just because um big words quarantine i i don't read a dictionary like i used to so i have to like look up definitions and context um but I understand where she's coming about um, uh, where she's coming from about the whole sex determination and um, all that. She, I think taking sex and just saying that oh, it doesn't matter. You're you whatever you identify as, whatever you want to be, you can say that is like you you know if you're non-binary or you're um, 
there's an A word, androgynous. Um, I'm asexual. sure there's maybe that too. Uh, no, asexual is you just don't want any. You're right. not physically uh, attracted to anything or anyone. Right, like maybe you want to cuddle, maybe you want to kiss, but you don't want anything more than that. Um, never mind. I know, okay. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about, though. I understand what you're uh, talking. Yeah, uh, I lost my point. Um, oh, um, yeah, I lost my point. That's okay. That I I, I, maybe you'll remember it. Um, I, I, th I think for me, I think the thing I see with basically any celebrities at this point, or any anyone who's famous or anything, is just like. Get off of Twitter. <laughs> right. President just, Trump. Just just get off of Twitter. Just stop. Just isn't just, there an arrest warrant not... out for Trump now in like Iran or something like that too? Thought I saw that on Twitter. I Probably. think it's, I think it's so unprofessional to like if you are a major politician or if you are a very heavy influence to just be on social media all the time. I mean, I understand promotions or talking back to fans and stuff, but being on it all the time, having to tweet about every single thing that goes on and always having something to say, it's, I don't think it's a good thing. I think that um, having an opinion is fine. I think that, you know, um, debating facts is fine, but just always having something to say isn't always the best thing. Sometimes it's, it's like, I don't think half of the people on Twitter think at all before they tweet anything. I just... It, <laughs> It just doesn't seem like anyone's taken enough time. There's just gut reaction, gut reaction. And, you know, it's just like uh, going back to, um, um, you know, like human rights and, and, and the transgender community and, and the LGBTQ community in general as a whole. And, you know, I guess what they have fought for in the past and what they've been fighting for. It, it, one thing that always gets me and I think is just crazy to think about is is, you know, maybe, you know, 10 years or so before my parents were born, you know, they were still fighting for interracial marriage. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and, and even, even into the seventies and stuff, you know, like, cause uh, in case you don't know, my, my, my dad's white, um, my dad's Dutch German, he's, and my mom's Indian. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, and the fact that, you know, they, they met in the late seventies and got married in the early eighties and it, it was still frowned upon in that time, you know, it, it, it kind of was honestly. And, you know, with, I guess our generation, we're seeing a lot of like, we're seeing so many like mixed children, you know, and how that's going to, you know, continue in the future and people are going to get more mixed and more mixed and whatever. But like, it, it's, it's always crazy for me to think about that, you know, technically they were still like frowned upon by major parts of society for stuff like that you know and it's like i always think about like what's going to be the thing for us like mm -hmm. when, when we're our, when we're in our 40s and 50s or whatever and you know what's gonna what's gonna come along then that we're just gonna be like no this is where i'm drawing the line this is what i'm not comfortable with well we've you know? already kind of yeah. seen that in our lifetime granted we were all probably in high school or younger than that like with the mm -hmm. um gay marriage being legalized Mm -hmm. I remember that whole deal, and that's kind of like when I fell off the whole church bandwagon. Is I had a lot of gay friends in high school, and then my godmother was a surrogate for a gay couple that are the kindest people I've ever met. And to mm -hmm. see the reaction from all the older people again, the old you can't teach an old dog new tricks thing coming up right. there, mm -hmm. but it got passed anyway. And that kind of gives me hope that with all the negative out there, that our generation can go out there and fix it and improve on it and get the things to where everyone is has the same right not based on wealth class mm -hmm. race or any of that right right i i like like for me it, it, you know it's it's people assuming that certain people are bad just because they they've been labeled a certain way or they themselves have labeled the other person that way you know it, what I've always, you know, I've always tried to use as a rule of life is, you know, people are kind regardless of, can, or can be kind or mean regardless of what their background is. It has mm -hmm. nothing to do with that. It's just what type of person they are. And that we should treat people, you know, how we expect to be treated on a daily basis. And, and 
everything that we go through. And, you know, yeah, there, there, there might be some people that you might find offensive, but those people could be under any category you could possibly think of, you know, just, just because you're, you're angry because someone's doing something that doesn't directly affect your life. Like, I don't know. And that's yeah, one thing that's always blown my mind is these yeah. people complaining about something they see. I'm like, why are you upset if it's not affecting you? Exactly. It's like like that. It has nothing to do with you. You you don't. Have, and uh, I think I think that's always the thing that like why Californians are the way they are in general is because uh, most people see California as this very like democratic very liberal very open state but there's a whole side of there's a whole side of california that is, is very much i guess like republican conservative but there aren't as many of them so obviously every time things are voted on whatever it's always you know democratic vote and you know that's just that's just how california is but like you know when you have places like let's say orange county where there's a lot of you know rich conservative people you know, living next to all those other communities that are very democratic liberal. And that, that, that's why like people always see Californians as like the, the, the screaming Democrats and stuff like that, because they're screaming at the people that are directly next to them, essentially more than screaming at people that are somewhere else in the country or whatever at that, you know, they're, they're, they're angry at each other. They're always yep. fighting against each other, you know? For people in chat that are from Texas and living here in Texas, uh, Orange County is a lot like Galveston. Just to give you a reference there. There's, there's your comparison. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing I will say um, that Rowling did say is, um, I don't think I have a quote. Oh, no, you know, I do have a quote. She Ooh, did quotes. say, um, she said, I want trans women to be safe. At the same time, I do not want to make natal girls and women less safe. And to continue that quote um, without actually quoting her, she was talking about um, she doesn't want men who feel that they can go out and just say, you know, I identify as a female or, you know, male to female, you know, I'm going to transition or, you know, anything like that. She was saying that she doesn't want men to just parade into a female's bathroom and violate them, whether they're trans or whether they're, they were born female, they are female. Um, and I feel, like, uh, I feel like it should go both ways as well, that women also sexually assault males, whether they're transitioned or not. So um, that one I'm a little on the fence about. Yeah, um, it's like, that, that one is like, I understand the point she's making. She yeah. just probably said it in the wrong words and shouldn't have said it on Twitter. People who menstruate is what she said. And mm -hmm. There are, there are so many ways that um, you can identify, well, not so many, but there are um, quite a few ways where you can identify as a female, where you could have been born, I don't remember how it happens, but you could be born um, with, what is it, both parts? And mm -hmm. yeah, you could, identify, you could be born with, you know, both, I mean, I guess, sexes, and yeah. from there, or you could, yeah, there's a lot of ways, I don't entirely know how they work, but... So I guess, yeah. I guess I can I can elaborate on on my understanding of that and what they the the process of what they have to do. Now, mm -hmm. this is just my understanding of what I've been told. This does not mean it's correct mm -hmm. in any way. But I, I'm told to when when babies like that come out, they essentially have a decision to make and to choose one or the other. And there's not much that they can really do to guarantee that one or the other is correct. So they kind of just have to choose one. And if that ends up being the wrong choice later, I mean, you think, you, you know, you do a DNA test and like figure it out, but because they're essentially a hermaphrodite, you know, they, 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 they just have to choose because if they try to keep both of them until their the child is at a point that they can choose, that's going to create major health problems, like major, major health problems for their development. So they have to, it's like, well, do I snip one or do I close the other? That that's what it comes down to. And, like that's a can you imagine like being in the hospital like just given birth and like this is a decision you have to make in a couple of days that you know might be the wrong decision in the end you know and maybe your kid comes up to you at like 12 and it's like i think i'm the wrong gender you know something yeah. like that like the, i i, I feel, as a parent i feel, feel like, like you got it wrong like on behalf of them 
and and you feel bad because you've 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 led them to the to, up to that point through that you life forced that, that, that upon them you know, right exactly and you know maybe it you know maybe it takes some beginning level of puberty to understand really where they were you know and but it's like well at what point do you tell the child about it and when do they come to you about it you know because they they could come to you in any time and saying was you know or you could see like little tendencies here and there that they they might feel more one gender than the other you know or things like that you know and it's, how do you, and know you never that's know what they actually want or are inside versus that's how just their personality because like I'm sure Bree's heard stories, but, like, my brother grew up in a household of two women, so he was very feminine as a child, to the point where my mom thought that he was a homosexual. And it took <laughs> actually meeting homosexuals for her to understand, no, he's not like that. He's just surrounded by females. He's just learning what he's living. Because my right. brother is not, obviously, he's married to this beautiful lady, but... <laughs> well, well, lady, not beautiful, but lady. <laughs> But so, yeah, I mean, like, I, I I totally understand what you're saying, Eternity, because like, 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 m my dad was worried about that with me at one point when I was when I was younger. Um, I would help my mom like by like when she was getting ready, I would hand her the makeup in the correct order from her makeup bag. Like this is when I was like four or five or whatever, you know. And it's like it's it's a cute thing, but like my dad was worried. He's like, oh, you know, he's gonna then he's gonna be into makeup and he's gonna come out and like you know, all that kind of stuff. And I was like, it was like, my mom was never worried about it. And she never thought twice about it. But it's just, and it's, it's, it's things like that, that from, you know, either parents perspective, or just like, things that they worry about, or whatever, you know, it's, but, you know, what if things like that happens? You know, what if, what if they, they do something that you're just not quite sure? But you know, it's, that's the thing It's like, well, if you're already at a point, you know, there has to be a point where the child, I think, has, has to have reached a level of understanding mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, to really comprehend everything, you know, before, I guess, you as a family or the parent and child can then decide what to do. It's like, you know, if you come across that crossroad, you know, because I feel like you'd at least need to reach an almost puberty age to go through or try to go through that. I, that's, 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 what that's my opinion. That's one thing I think would be hard to do is to wait until they have an understanding because they're not going to teach this in schools. And if they do, it's not going to be anytime soon. It's probably not going to be in the time that we have kids or right. we have kids when we're like 40, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was actually, I was thinking about that a lot earlier. Um, mainly because I have a dog and I think of her as my child and I'm like, Oh, if only you went to school, but um, <laughs> no one can go yeah, to school now. <laughs> <laughs> she can go to online school. She can market everyone else, not me. Right. Um, but if if I had a, if I had a kid right now and they were, you know, of the age where you know they start learning about their bodies and you know how other bodies work and all that, and they had questions like that, you know, like let's say they raise a hand and you know, like what if I wanted to be a boy but I'm a girl? A lot of teachers are biased because they were older and they were raised in a time where that wasn't really Appropriate. a super popular thing or mm. that's something they don't know very well so they would probably have an ignorant uh, ignorant answer or they would have an unclear answer right i would like to see them implement that in schools in a way where it's not offensive it's not ignorant it's not it's just something natural and i, I like i said i don't think we'll see that in um the next maybe 10 years maybe we will i don't know maybe we'll have some t uh, some people who are transgender or they know of you know how it works and mm -hmm. their just mental process thought process and maybe they'll be teachers and they'll know how to teach it okay i i have a question for you guys because because both of you went to public school correct yes yes okay see i went to a very private christian school and i i, oh, I, I so yeah, exactly. we heard that but one. um the, the 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 question I wanted to ask is like when they did like I guess like sex education or like health class, right? Did, was there ever a point where they like separated the guys and girls to like talk about certain things? Yes, they did that in elementary school, but not okay. for me in high school. Yeah, not we, in high school. we didn't have sex ed in high school. At least I didn't. Um, okay. In fifth grade, we all sat together and we were learning 
uh, about the feet at the about the each other's bodies and everything but mainly it was like in fifth grade it was focused on like this is where you shave and this is how you shave and you wear deodorant because of this and it was more like personal hygiene stuff in fifth grade and then in sixth grade that's gotcha. when we got separated and i i remember very clearly we were separated because there was no female sixth grade teachers so the females all went to my oh. teacher who is a very old man and it was the most <laughs> awkward situation when he'd hand out them diagrams of the opposite sex parts and began to explain what each part of it was mm -hmm. i don't know oh go ahead no, you go ahead. You're good. Okay. No, I was just like, for me, it's like, especially like when you get to like the end of middle school and early high school, like as, as much as it's quote unquote embarrassing or whatever, I think they should just teach everyone everything together. My sixth grade um, class, I, I learned sex ed three different times at three different schools. I learned in sixth grade um, at the school I went to before I moved from Alaska. Um, and they had the classroom split. It was boys on one side, girls on one side, but we didn't have tables on the opposite side of the room. It was just however the tables were. The boys just sit on the tables right there, and the girls were like four or five feet apart and uh, away from them. And we just, we would all ask questions, and we would all learn the same thing in the same room together. And then when I learned in, I think, it was either seventh or eighth grade, or maybe both years, in junior high at um, Sequoia, we learned um, girls um, at one time and then boys at another time. Mm -hmm. And then in high school, freshman year, when I took um, health, we learned just all together. I was actually sitting uh, right next to my first boyfriend learning about STDs. Oh, good. Wonderful. And we Perfect. Hadn't even kissed for the first time yet. So that was the most uncomfortable, awkward thing. He even covered my eyes when our health teacher showed us pictures of said STDs. Mm hmm. The most uncomfortable thing ever. Last yeah, that that's not a fun video. Me. No. That was, a, that was a video for us. I don't know about you guys. It was a video for us. Man. We got a combination. I Ooh. never had any classes on STDs. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I took health in high school, but the health teacher I had was more focused on her leadership class. So we spent most of our time when we were supposed to be doing health, planning for our futures. We were doing career courses. What color fits you best? Like it was like a full on BuzzFeed quiz that we were taking instead of doing help. And our driver's ed yep. thing, when it came time, because she was half this year you took help, half the year you took driver's ed. Yep. The first half we did our health, and then when we got to the driver's ed portion, she's like, "Here's a book from 1978. Memorize it and go take your test, and you're good to go." It was the worst like class I ever took. I can't stand how schools sometimes teach, well, not schools, but like how a lot of teachers teach. I had a lot of really good teachers and I had a lot more not so great teachers. Mm -hmm. I had a friend who, I mean, this is kind of a sideline, but I had a friend who took Spanish with a Spanish teacher who made you teach yourself. He did not do anything but hand you papers, maybe help you if you had a question, but he'd pretty much give you the textbook and then sit that's, at his desk and grade papers. That's how I, to, that's how I had to learn our organic chemistry, honestly. I mean, the teacher tried to help, but the teacher, oh, teacher was useless to me. To me. Some other people, sure, but to me, like, I had to take that class twice because of that. So. That was like me in geometry. The only thing <coughs> I was ever good at in geometry was proofs, but the class I got in, I had sixth period geometry, which was the last day of class of the day. It was right before I'd have to go to softball practice or conditioning or some kind of JRTC event. And because a, the majority of students in our class were Hispanics and spoke Spanish, she taught the class in Spanish. I was in Spanish one at the time. Did not speak an <laughs> ounce of fine. Spanish. Still don't speak any Spanish, to be fair. But I didn't understand it. Thankfully, the teacher I had had for Algebra 1, actually, he was the math teacher for every other course I took in high school. Uh, I was good friends with and ended up being his TA later on. I would go to his class after school or before school and get tutoring. So I actually understood geometry enough to pass. And I passed with a C. Nice. Fun, fun fact about geometry. I never completed geometry. I took geometry my freshman year, and I never did my homework. My teacher made not not like actual bets, but like you know, just a verbal like, a, oh, you know, who like how many of you think this, or how many of you think that? I was mm -hmm. always late all throughout high school. I was like half an hour, hour, hour and a half mm -hmm. late to my classes. So they'd always take 
bet to see if I was going to be late <laughs> and how late. And so I became not his favorite student, but I became a student that he would engage with and like, you know, make jokes with. And yeah, that's what geometry was for me. Just jokes and tardiness. Yeah, oh, the, see, the... I was the exact opposite. I was teacher's pet all round. I was the kid mm. that showed up five minutes early. I was even, I remember even my senior year of high school, um, our colonel for JRTC, he needed a stapler one day and I pulled one out of my bag. He's like, bossed, she's an overachiever. Don't <laughs> bossed, have a life. I was like, colonel, <laughs> why? <laughs> I yeah. was English for senior year when I retook English two for the third time. And when then for the second half of the year when I took senior English, I was her favorite because we did word jumbles every Thursday for extra bonus points. And my table finished first almost every time because of me. Nice. And it was Christian. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, so my, uh, I was basically the teacher's pet of the, the algebra teacher, not the, Ooh. not the nerds not the not not the geometry teacher though not the geometry teacher because the geometry slash pre-calc calc teacher whatever was a different teacher than the algebra teacher and physical science teacher um but somehow i don't know how i weaseled out of it i like basically because like I, I i homeschooled geometry in the summer but i didn't really take it but for some reason they allowed me to just go from algebra one to two and here I am today. I don't really know. I can't really explain it, but here I am. See, I, I took algebra two three times and then went back to algebra one. So I took geometry. Uh huh. Algebra, <laughs> algebra two, algebra two, um, algebra one, algebra two. And I st my teacher only passed me with sympathy because he had me. So I had two teachers for algebra two. Mm -hmm. I had um, MACD. You don't have to know who he is, but I had MACD for the first time. The second time around, I had, I'm going to call him Michael because I don't remember his name at the moment. Um, but yeah, I had Michael for Algebra 2. Then I went to Algebra 1 with another teacher. And then I passed Algebra 1 easy because we learned that in 7th and 8th grade. If you don't know Algebra 1 by the time you're in high school, you are oh, not going to get it. I'm about to disappoint you. Algebra 2. Uh, senior year, I had Mac D again, the, the first out of two teacher I had, and um, I didn't do my homework again. I did really good on tests and um, in class classwork, and so he passed me with a D minus. Do y'all remember the star testing? Uh, uh, the, or okay. the battery testing? So we took the Iowa ones, the ITBS, whatever. Oh, I did. I think I was one of the last classes that used the star testing system, but when I moved from elementary school to high school, my star test for my eighth grade year, I, I've i always been a bad test taker, but because of my scores I got on that, I was put in Algebra 1 as a freshman instead of going to Geometry with the rest of my peers. Hmm. So I went Algebra yeah, 1, I mean, I, Geometry. I took, geometry one. I, I took Algebra 1 freshman year as well. I was the last, um, I was the last of our... I was the last um, class, or yeah, class of freshmen to be put into geometry at, at um, the school we went to. Um, and after that, everyone was put into algebra one freshman year. Oh, oh, that's that's the reason. I, I just remembered. That's the reason that they let me go to algebra two is because the battery, my battery test score was so high, and I was like, I hate geometry. Can I just try to do algebra two, and you'll let me? And they were like, okay, but if you start, if you, if you get like worse than this grade, then we're kicking you back, basically. Oh, so you didn't, because, you didn't yeah. have to pick math until your senior year, basically, for me. So I went Algebra gotcha. 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and then your last year, as long as you got to Algebra 2, you didn't have to take any more math. So a lot of people I know didn't take any math, or they were overachievers, and they went to Pre-Cal or Calculus. I, instead, <laughs> because I had a crush on my teacher at the time, and he'd been my math teacher for f essentially three years, he was opening up a new math class that he wanted to try out called finite math. So my senior year, I took finite math, had that fourth period, and then fifth period, I was TA. So I got to essentially spend my That's lunch fun. break with him. But yeah. Right. So I took finite math, which is a bunch of matrices and I don't use in day-to-day -day life. It was unimportant. So, uh, so did it, did uh, did any of you ever try taking an AP exam for any class? Or did you any of you uh, take any kind of AP, AP class? I okay. took but I didn't take the test. Okay. So 
the the geometry teacher who was also the calc teacher, right? I took calc. No one learned anything in that class. I we we get to the AP test and I am just like I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Um I tried to do about half of the test and then there was like this big section where we had to like show do a problem or like do a derivative or something and we had to just like show all our work. I just spent my time in that section just writing a I'm sorry note to the person who had to grade it. <laughs> and I think I think I drew a little Tetris Tetris like game. I think I also drew a little bit of Pac-Man. I was just sitting there for like an hour and a half just I'm done. I did pass the the AP English one though, so that was nice. I but I barely AP passed it. Three. I took AP US History my junior year, and then my senior year I took AP Government and AP Economics. My AP US History, history test. I I remember I got I remember all the scores. I don't really remember a lot about the test. Mm-hmm. I remember kind of bullshitting on the essay question because my US, AP US History teacher had guessed correctly for seven years straight what the essay was going to be on, so he guessed that year as well and told memorize this because i guarantee your essay is going to be on this it was the first year he was wrong so i had no idea what the topic was on for the essay fucked it up i got a two on the test though and then my senior year uh ap government i got a three and ap economics i got a four i did so well in ap economics and i swear that entire year i was just bullshitting i have no idea what i learned i don't remember any of it (laughs) See, see, see. That's the that's the kind of thing. It's like the like the like personal money management or like econ. It's like a lot of it is just such like don't spend your money and put it into this thing. As long as you know what kind of thing you're supposed to put it into, mm-hmm. more or less okay. But like, um, I, I I took the the history one and I took I took the calc one. I both got a one, but I passed the English one with a three, and I was like, okay enough to pass so i only took like one english class in college but going to college i had the best u.s history teacher and the best calc teacher which made such a difference and made those classes led the, 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 taking calc from him was like like it was it was it was like i don't even know how to describe it. it was like it was like eating ice cream man it was just like it was the easiest it was it was fun it was fun it was enjoyable that's how it was just oh, it was so good See, I'm not going to tolerant, so that doesn't sound fun. It's a lot <laughs> easier to learn if the teacher is engaging and makes the subject interesting. Or, I know or just for me, know how to simplify it. Exactly, just, yeah. For me, I taking Spanish 1, I got an F in that. or I, I finished the year with a D in that class, which meant I was going to have mm-hmm. to retake it. But when I went into Spanish 2, because they are like, we'll put you in Spanish 2. If you get a B or higher, you don't have to retake Spanish 1. I had mm-hmm. such a great Spanish 2 teacher. I got an A all semesters, and it bumped that D up to a C, and I didn't have to retake Spanish 1. That's nice. Awesome. So it's all about the teacher, and especially if they're easy to talk to, so if you have questions, you're willing to ask. That's one reason I passed theater. Um, I took theater th- uh, thrice. I took it three times. Hmm. And um, my first, I'll just say, uh, yeah, my first course, um, beginners, I I was a nervous wreck. I had stage fright super bad, and I got the shake. And for my first performance, um, I missed two lines for a whole monologue. But granted, I took I, I was taken from a whole class of people who were almost completely better than me at acting, and they were more confident. And she gave me a monologue, a whole ass oh, paragraph. Of course, and. I didn't show up the second night because I stayed home sick. And my dad's policy was if you stay home, you don't go to anything, not even if it's um, for school. So my second course of theater, um, I did a lot better. I was way more confident and I didn't do any of the homework. I did memorization, but I didn't do anything else for any project. Mm -hmm. So I got a low low, uh, score on that one, but she passed me because I was way more confident for performances. And then my final course of theater, um, we were supposed to do Pride and Prejudice for our final play. Mm-hmm. And we had like five boys in the entire class and none of them were taking it seriously. Yep. And I failed. Well, I didn't fail. I passed the class with a D because um, that final performance was never 
taken into account. It was never graded. So I was graded off of everything else that I didn't do aside from monologues. Right. So she passed me because she knew my potential and she knew that I never got a chance to show up because other students failed to yep. take part. The only, the only major uh, play we actually did and like built sets for and everything was we did Cheaper by the Dungeon. Dozen, yeah. Cheaper oh, by the Dozen. This. And it was, it was really fun. But I, I ended up playing two characters because I ended up choosing minor characters because I was like, well, I don't want the responsibility. I don't want to have to memorize all this, but I'm going to have fun with these two characters because I like this. Uh, I played the character that I like the most or the kid I like the most, the, the funny one, the one who's always like poking jabs and whatever. Played that kid. Um, and then I also played the doctor. And that was a, that was a fun uh, uh, change back and forth between those two characters. Oh, that would have um, been but- so like the, the running around backstage is like it's one of the most exciting but like frightening things to do at the same time. It, Jungle it, Book was fun, yeah. Yeah, but um, the the I I was so upset because when we actually went to perform it, I have maybe like six seven lines in the whole in the whole in the whole play, right? And I was essentially like pause, not pausing for effect, but like you know, like I was acting, you know, I was like thinking about whatever. And then one of the the guys who have way more lines. Stepped over my line. So I ended up sending, saying about like, I want to say like four of the seven lines at the end because like, was like, well, because I had my pages memorized to the T, right? Mm-hmm. Because like, I only had like four lines in one section and then like five lines in another, you know? And so it's like, I had them memorized to a T. So I had no problem with my lines and where they were and how they went. And I could even pick up where, you know, if they had like not said their line completely correctly, I could pick up and I'd know where I was. But he stepped over my lines twice i was very upset that hurts me because i've had that happen before and i've been in i i we had to do quite a few performances and the jungle book i we did um two nights for the play and i that was my second course and i had i think i had two lines and it wasn't even more than like 15 words total and i was a wolf it was so upsetting and the second night my line got to- my lines got totally skipped because um at the intro there's, there's supposed to be a couple of wolves and they're supposed to be kind of um beginning the narrative of the story tell you what's going to go on and then you go into the actual play totally got skipped because um someone yeah someone skipped me and then we went into the narrative and then when the time came where um there was a big old meeting before um they go to see a Shere Khan and then mm-hmm. all that stuff happens I had like four words and there was another wolf that was supposed to talk um, before me and he never spoke and there was a pause and then we both got skipped and I was so upset because that, that was my biggest part in that yep. play. Yep. And, the, the, and of course, like, like, like you're saying, it was like the line that got skipped was like one of the funniest lines in the entire play. And I was like, oh, it's killing me. And I was, I was so upset afterwards. Like eh, this, this is also the guy that, that took, uh, essay president from me, but that's because I didn't pr- prepare a speech. Now, a- essay like a student association. I don't know. I don't know what what you oh, guys. Are like an essay. I'm a sucker for English. Continue. I'm oh no no yeah yeah a student association. But that that's a different story because I didn't I didn't prepare basically any speech, and he prepared this long speech, and I was like, it's one of those things that still haunts me to this day. But whatever. <laughs> It's gone now. It's over with. But awesome. this is also the same person who stepped over my lines, and that's why sometimes I st- I'm still angry at him. The closest I ever came to the theater was in high school. I was dating the student that was the lighting director for the theater kids. That is the closest I ever nice. got to the theater. Okay. Unless you count like the JRTC formations, which it's not acting, so I would say no. You're just standing there stoically. But yeah, well, I, I never one, did one, theater. One thing I was mad about in 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 our drama class was that there was some girls who were there that just didn't care they were not invested whatever and it it was hard to act with them because like you know how like like when you're acting of course you know sometimes you you have to be close to people or like you have to be like you know not intimate but you know essentially like you're in this like space together you're you're acting together you know whatever and they just would not do it and sometimes it was just the most frustrating thing it's very and bland isn't it or, and they're just standing there and it's like you can't act with them because they're, they're not like they're not into the moment are they laughing in your face I... 
couple times when or, yeah, I just stuff back. like that. And they were like the the quote unquote like some of them were like the quote unquote like popular girls or whatever. Oh, so they're, they're like they're like ew, I don't want to be here. I'm just here for the credit. Aren't thou Romeo? And it's like get yeah. into it or get out if you're like yeah. Pick a side. We we there was a actually my 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 sister's now fiance. Um, he was one of the leaders for the uh, uh, improv group at, at college, and I, I I would go to their um, go to their like meetings sometimes just to like do do stuff when I was like oh I have a free night or whatever, and they're having their meetings, so it's like I'll just go there and do do improv stuff and stuff like that. That that's really fun, and I I enjoy that. I would love to do something like that. I want to go. I want to get back into acting, but not at all as a career, just because that would take away from home life and. Yeah my hours could differ and it's once you're once you become an actor you're pretty much on call especially if you're um a backup for somebody so mm -hmm. i mean if i went to college and i actually went to a college that had um a theater program i probably would definitely take up a class or two i was definitely gonna go to delta um for theater but then uh you know, then zach and i got back together <laughs> Happier now. I'm happier hey. about that. So sometimes things in happen. In big ass house. And they're beautiful poppers. I um, could, I, you know what? For a vlog, I could totally do a whole skit by myself up yeah, in here. Yeah, I was gonna say you could right. even do skits. That could help take off your vlogging. <laughs> he would be. He would. He would be a boy. I'm gonna say that right now. <laughs> Use the dog. Use the pupper. <laughs> Shoot! Yeah. Into it. They'd be excited. They'd like they would they'd be like ah oh, this guy this is gonna be the dog's vlog now you you brought her into it now she has to take it over it wouldn't <laughs> be that more there you go well thank but, you yeah. so much Christian for joining us um oh you yeah can of find course. Christian um on Twitter and Twitch as ambiguous rupees Bree you can see here every week on Wednesdays until she starts her vlog and then we'll put that up in our little notification area thank you guys so much for joining us. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Adios.